Story 1. Opioid Awareness, literally a few months ago, started with them blasting the entirety of the disturbed cover of The Sound of Silence, while a slideshow of images containing sad stock photos with the watermark all over, random shots of really dark nighttime photos, and tons of poorly photoshopped drug images trudged on ever so slowly. Then, two women told us the harrowing stories of how their sons died of opioid overdoses. Incredibly emotional. Several people cried. Real downer, basically. Then, a DEA agent comes up and tries to act like a bad cop. He calls us, an assembly of high school students, grades 9 to 12, f***ing morons. The principal was not pleased. He is then followed by a nurse who was there to tell us the physical effects of opioid addiction and withdrawals and all of that. And she did talk about that, but the whole time she was running around practically screaming jokes and doing shitty over-the-top gags trying to be the comic relief. In an opioid assembly, where two women shared the stories of how their children died, what the f*** was she doing being that loud and crazy? Everyone came out of the whole thing with a general attitude of, yeah, f*** opioids, but also, fuck that whole presentation. Story 2. Not a literal presentation, really, but we had an assembly in high school where the students that helped plan homecoming would announce the nominations for homecoming court. It always had a cute little theme and like a short skit involved. Well, at one point, the audio they were using as the cue for the skit failed. They just kind of paused for technical difficulties. But this one girl from the planning committee started singing a random Disney song a cappella while improvising a dance to go along with it. I guess as a distraction from them trying to fix the audio? She kept trying to get people to join in with her, but nobody did. And she eventually just kind of trailed off mid-song and started pouting that nobody would sing with her. Then, once they got the audio fixed for the skit, she pouted and snapped the way through the rest of her lines, which made everything even more uncomfortable. The other famous one was when a girl in our class running for student government referenced a hashtag that she was trying to make popular during her campaign speech to the whole school. The hashtag was something catchy about her having a big ass. There was a genuine collective yikes from the crowd when she said it. I don't think she got elected. Story 3. Okay, I posted this in another thread, but it fits here too, so here it is. So this was in my first year of college. We had this one really awkward student in class. He was the one that you didn't really want to talk to, for reasons I'll list soon. In one of our English language classes, our professor, a posh 60-something old British lady, asked us to write our first essay about things we liked, just a regular essay so she can get to know us better. Our class was one of those required classes that students from all majors had to take, so many were not an English major, hence the easy essay. So next class comes in. We hand them over, and to our surprise, the professor tells us to stand up and read them out loud. No problem for me and the rest of the class. That is until it was the turn of the awkward guy. He stands up and reads his essay, which was about furries having incestual relationships with each other. It went something like this, not word by word, but the plot was engraved in my brain. Wolf Fang was entering his 40s and had a girlfriend who was 10. He impregnated her and had two sons. When one of his sons was old enough to get married, Wolf Fang banged him and his wife on their wedding day. He also banged his grandson after he was born and had a threesome that included his mother. Now this was the short version of it. The entire thing went on for around five minutes, and our professor didn't even stop him, but was horrified as she was listening to the entire thing. I think she was hooked by the horror just as the entire class was. It doesn't even end there. He brought sketches that include the scenes of his essay. I'm not proud to say that me and 40-something students saw a badly sketched wolf that day. He ended it by plugging his deviant art account. Story 4 I studied computer security. In an introduction to computer security course, we had to do a project on social engineering. A student decided that for his project, he was going to find a way to gain access to a chosen website. He found a small local business website, identified that the domain was registered to an email address from a local ISP, called the ISP to reset the password. They asked him for his last four of his SSN, so he hung up. 
He found the phone number of the business, so called them and pretended to be from the ISP, offering three months free if the person did a five-question survey. They accepted and answered some BS questions. Then he asked for the last four of the guy's SSN, which they gave no problem. He then called the ISP with the last four and got them to reset the password of the email account. He then logged into the email and used it to get the domain registrar to send a password reset to the email, which he used to reset the password of the domain account, and deleted the email. He recorded all phone calls and screenshotted the whole process. As he presented all these, we kept expecting him to say, but that would be illegal, so I didn't do X, but he went all the way. The professor finally stopped him after he said he logged into the domain registrar and told him to destroy everything and never speak of it again. I think the professor was a bit nicer than he could have been, potentially to the point of accomplice, telling him to destroy evidence. Story 5 We were supposed to have Arnold Schwarzenegger come to our school sometime around 1999 or 2000. The principal was hyping it up for weeks. Then, about four days before his arrival, it was announced on Friday that he wasn't coming. Fast forward to Monday during morning announcements, and it's announced he's changed his mind and is coming to our school tomorrow as planned. Come Tuesday morning, everyone is excited. We're all amped to meet the Terminator. A handful of parents even came with VHS copies of his movies, posters, etc. We're all going to our auditorium, taking our seats. Principal takes the stage, takes the moment to make some announcements, award honor roll, perfect attendance, etc. Finally, she starts hyping up Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everyone is excited and on edge when she basically says, Here's Arnie, and... It's the vice principal in a leather jacket holding a shotgun, not a toy one either, and spends 30 to 40 minutes trying to hype us up for FCAT all the while doing the absolute worst impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger I've ever heard. Once we realized Arnie wasn't there, people started shouting, screaming at the principal for lying to us, along with some of the parents who came to this. I do hope someone has footage of this meltdown of a bunch of K-5 through kids shouting and screaming at the principals because Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't come to our school, because I clearly remember two to three people having camcorders. Story 6. Second year of high school. We needed to act out a chapter of a book. The teacher put us in groups of five, but there were six characters in the chapter, and three of them were women, but we had two girls in the group. So, guess who ended up having a double role? Why me? Because, in the words of my teammates, I was the one with the most feminine face. With no options, I learned my dialogues, practiced my best attempt at a female voice, grabbed a scarf and a beanie from my mom, and went out there to embarrass myself in front of all the class. Apparently, with the beanie and the scarf, I do look like a girl, because the first time someone saw me with that, he thought I was a girl from another class. That was totally what I wanted to hear at that moment. Then the play started. I was constantly switching my female character with my male character, basically just changing the beanie and scarf for a coat and changing my voice. It wouldn't be that bad if my scenes were scattered around the play, but no, they were consecutive. So there I am, exiting and entering the classroom with different outfits and voices, hoping that anyone who was walking through the hallway looked at me and thought I just went nuts. Also, I get really nervous speaking in public, and it's even worse when I'm acting. And it's even worse when I'm acting, humiliating myself in public, and with my crush next to me. Almost all my scenes were me talking to my crush with the stupid beanie, the stupid scarf, my stupid attempt at a female voice, and my stupid face. We got a 17 out of 20 though, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Story 7. 12th grade English class. We were supposed to do book reports and then do presentations on the works we did. I think the teacher was phoning it in as the semester drew to a close. A guy did a presentation on Bio of a Space Tyrant by Pierce Anthony, book one. It's a golden age type sci-fi story about a man who survives a childhood pirate attack, joins the military, and gradually works his way up to being a politician, then a dictator. Being a work by Pierce Anthony, it had a few lurid scenes and questionable adult teenage girl relationship stuff. I'd read it, because I had no taste as a teenager, 
and was interested to hear something that wasn't pride and prejudice that I was sort of familiar with. Except he focused way too much on the sketchy parts. Then, when people commented to try to get him to move on, he found and read aloud from the parts early in the book where the protagonist witnesses the essay of his mother and sister by space pirates, with a smile on his face. People groaned out loud, were vocally uncomfortable. Some raised their voices to tell him to stop and tried to tell the teacher to get him to stop. And she didn't. Again, I think she was 100% phoning it in and just not paying attention. The guy giving the presentation just marched along with the recitation for what felt like another two minutes, probably 20 to 30 seconds, before the teacher stopped him. Story 8. My junior year in French class. This one girl did not know French at all, despite taking the class for four years. She was pretty open about it too, laughing and saying how she didn't need this class in the middle of the presentation. The teacher asked her to sit. I forgot to add that prior to being called out, she was standing in front of her presentation, pointing at it and laughing. At one point, she was trying to say in French, I am happy, but she couldn't think of it and finally just said, J squeeze am happy, okay? Story 9. It's me. I did this. I cringe about it to this day, nearly 20 years later. I was 16 and in high school. My high school was going to do a spring talent show. I wanted to be in the talent show and show off my talents. The problem was, my actual talents are not ones that I could show off at a talent show. So I decided to try singing. I have never sung in my life. I have never had voice lessons. I was in my prime weeb stage and chose an anime song to sing. I didn't know any actual Japanese. I had just memorized the lyrics from hearing the song so many times. Luckily, I didn't make it past auditions, but several people saw an overweight girl in a Sailor Moon shirt trying to sing Butterfly, despite having never done any singing or voice training ever in her life, nearly 20 years later, and remembering it keeps me awake at night. Story 10 We had this senior talent show that a few male students could sign up for. No idea why it was only guys, or how the few people even got nominated for it, and they all had to do their own act. Some sang, some danced, some put on a funny skit. Possibilities were endless. Well, each year, someone who never got told they weren't good at singing would end up on stage. One time, this guy did the evolution of boy band songs, and it was just below average singing for, no joke, 15 minutes. Bonus skit that I'm glad didn't stop because it was hilarious. One guy did a wrestling skit with different movie characters, and my friend was the announcer. When Indiana Jones got into the ring, my friend announced, It's the BDSM bad boy himself! And somehow that slipped by all the school staff members and made it into the DVDs the school sold. Another friend of mine sang Disney princess songs while wearing a Sonic hat and got second place and at least three girls gave him their number. What? Story 11. High school junior English class. An easy six to seven years ago, so details are a bit fuzzy. We had three weeks to prepare a presentation alongside an informative essay that we wrote. Weeks of in-class time, like three to four weeks of full five-day, 50-minute classes for this essay. Presentation, and the actual presenting. This kid in the class decided to write about the problems of procrastination. For the essay, it was a few sentences, something like, I procrastinated and this was the result, nothing done, etc. The presentation. A few slides, all white with the default texts and sizes, and it was something along the same lines of, I have nothing prepared because my topic is procrastination. The teacher was disturbingly unimpressed, and the kid threw such a fit about failing this major project, seriously, it was a hefty portion of the class, that he transferred out of the class. Story 12 I had my college freshman English students present 10 minutes on their favorite hobbies, with PowerPoints and handouts. This one stoner kid decided to do his own Magic the Gathering, which I was pretty excited about since I'm an avid player. He started his presentation by announcing to the class in a booming voice, I am a planeswalker. The next 15 minutes, five over the limit, he explained the lore and backstory. He never once said it was a game or fantasy series. He literally presented it as if it were fact. He sounded completely insane, describing how he loved raising the dead and waging war against elves and angels. 
Awkward aside, he failed my class, and we later had to play in a major tournament. I beat him and knocked him out of the prize bracket. He was only in my area because his family had been evicted and he was living with a friend. Story 13. A kid in my middle school class, late 80s, decided to run for class president. He was one of those kids who was squarely in the middle of the student hierarchy. People knew him, but knew he was a bit off. His last name was O'Brien. Some people called him OB for short. He gets up in front of the school to give his speech and finishes with his campaign slogan. To quote from a very famous U.S. ad at the time, OB, it's the way you should be. Yes, his campaign slogan was the one for tampons. The round of ironic applause only fueled his fervor, and he became more and more hyped up with the crowd, encouraging people to start chanting the slogan. Ugh. Story 14. College communications class. Had to choose a topic that was considered controversial and attempt to change viewpoints, etc. Some dude chose women in the military. Obviously had valid points for active duty combat such as weight, carrying capacity, etc. It all went downhill when he brought up menstrual cycles and hormones. Every single woman in that class was staring daggers as he rambled with little evidence anecdotal or otherwise. How a woman could be incapacitated in the field from cramps, blood loss, and or hormonal mood changes impacting morale, as well as complications with having to add menstrual supplies to a pack. Like, dude, if a woman was struggling that much with her monthly, either from pain management, anemia, or moodiness, she would discuss treatment with her doctor. Like, all periods aren't universal blood waterfall hellscapes. Mine is only on day one and two. Story 15. Wasn't exactly a classroom presentation, but I was in fourth grade, and my school had the woman who represented our state in the Miss America pageant that year to give us all some anti-bullying, you-can-do-anything-you-set-your-heart-to speech. We were in the gymnasium, and the entire elementary school was there, first through fifth grade. During the speech, she mentioned that she was bullied when she was in school about having a flat chest to a bunch of elementary school kids who haven't even thought of puberty yet. She must have mentioned it at least three or four times during the whole speech. I'm sure I wasn't the only one who was weirded out by the whole ordeal. Story 16. I was the one who was told to stop. My 11th grade English teacher told us to do a debate on a topic with a partner. One partner would support a topic and the other would be against it. I didn't really care about it, but my friend and I chose censorship, and he opposed censorship, so I had to argue that censorship was a good thing. Even though I didn't care about the class, I do care about getting a good grade. While it was a pain to gather information, I was able to compile and gather a lot of evidence for it. Day of the debate came, and my friend thought it would be an easy win for him. He didn't realize I would have some really strong evidence about the topic, and he flustered a lot. When it was time for the class to debate with us, almost all of them tried to refute me, but I kept shutting them down to the point that only one or two people were still talking, but they were already losing. I remembered all of them were visibly frustrated and confused. I ended up getting almost a perfect score. My partner got a low B, and word started to spread about me supporting communism. I didn't care what they thought. I just wanted a good grade. Story 17 Final presentation for our final class as a senior in college. It was awkwardly placed at 7 to 9.30 on Thursday evenings. We had to do a final presentation about a topic that was related to our major, in simplistic terms. A kid did his own weed. It was about mass-producing weed, like a scientific look of how this would work, which would have been fine, but about halfway through, he got off topic and started preaching how weed isn't bad and people need to accept it. This went on for about 10 minutes. We kept waiting for the teacher to stop him, but she sat there patiently. He even moved to another slide and somehow brought it back to the same subject. I eventually left to use the bathroom because I was cringing so hard. Story 18. We had to split the class into a boys group and a girls group to get a talk about our growing bodies in the fifth grade. The boys got to watch a video and it became a huge joke because, in the video, a boy said, Daddy, why does my pee-pee get hard? The boys were repeating that for a whole week. Meanwhile, I was in the girls' group, and we didn't get a video, just a talk. 
the conversation literally transformed from growing bodies to boys will be boys, stay safe. I mean, come on, boys will be boys. No, you need to teach the boys to handle themselves instead of teaching us how to handle them. Anyways, out of the many school presentations I've been forced to go to, that was one of the worst. Story 1. At a high school near me 20 years ago, the senior class decided to have a food fight at lunch on the last day of classes one year. Turned into a riot with the school locked down for the whole afternoon. Kids frantic on cell phones, even then, with their parents because they had no clue why this was happening and the state police and about 20 other local law enforcement agencies deployed to the school. The school expelled 12 of the graduating seniors. Very difficult to do for a public school, but not impossible. And barred about the same amount of others from taking part in graduation. Story 2. I was in the theater department back in high school. One day, at the beginning of our acting class, the teacher came in and told us all to sit down. This one kid sat in the middle of the front row, and as he took his seat, his glass pipe fell out of his pocket and clattered to the floor. Everyone is silent for a moment. Then the teacher goes, All right, I'm going to go out in the hallway for 30 seconds, then I'm going to come back in, and we'll try this again. Walked out. Walked back in 30 seconds later, like he said saw that the pipe was no longer in evidence, and class proceeded like normal, or as close to normal as theater classes ever get. Story 3. Walked out of English class to talk to another kid in the hall. The teacher was real lax, so she didn't care he walked out to talk to this guy. Fight breaks out in the hall. Teacher runs out. Other teachers come to help break up the fight. One teacher asked the kid that walked out of class why they were fighting, and he said, he stole my kid who left class was selling, and the kid in the hall tried to walk off without paying. Any other BS excuse would have just gotten him suspended. Story 4. Happened in kindergarten. There was a kid named Dexter who had severe anger issues. Every day, a small group of kids would get certain jobs to do around the classroom, such as line leader, table cleaner, etc. Dexter got the table cleaner position, and he was absolutely livid, since he wanted to be line leader. What started off as a screaming fit escalated into him throwing scissors around the class, biting the teacher's hand, shattering a window with his flying scissors, breaking the tank that housed the class gerbils, and just trashing the entire classroom. The rest of the students had to evacuate the class while the teacher and principal attempted to restrain him. Security had to get involved. Never saw him again after that day. Story 5. Guy grew up doing Muay Thai, boxing, and wrestling. Forgot where he was during a wrestling match and threw a spinning back fist that knocked his opponent clean out. He was completely mortified once he realized what he did. Straight-A student, star athlete, and genuinely good guy. The class president even addressed it and organized protests and walkouts until he was reinstated. Even the guy that got knocked out and his parents forgave him and supported us. He did get reinstated but wasn't allowed to wrestle or box anymore. Not sure what the coaches pulled to allow him to play football. He eventually quit football his senior year and was never really the same. Story 6 he made a bomb threat online. Most of the school skipped out the day he did because they didn't want to be blown up. I was one of the poor souls with no social media, so I came into school not knowing there was a freaking bomb threat. I also had a mom who was unfazed and just told me, you'll be fine, go to class, when I called her. I didn't learn until the next day that he had been apprehended and expelled. What scared me was I knew him for years, and he never seemed like the kind of person to go that far. He was a class clown, but I never thought he would take that as even a joke. Apparently, he did have a bomb, but it thankfully never made it to the school grounds. However, I would like to say that while my mom made a mistake, that doesn't make her a bad parent. We had a really good relationship, and I love her. She regrets the fact that she left me scared with little to no information, but she knew I would be fine. It was me who didn't know at the time. Story 7. Middle School. He was really into Assassin's Creed. Video game and main character is an assassin. He also seemed like a slightly depressed, edgy kid. 
I became friends with him during his last two to three weeks. He told me he wanted to make a cool stabby blade thing that shoots out of his sleeve like in the video game. I told him that would be cool, but I never was dumb enough to do it myself. He actually made it and brought it to school. We spent a couple of days of recess and lunch running around and I watched him terrorize some of the kids, including myself. I never thought he'd harm anyone though. Someone must have told him. School supervisor guy came in, asked for him and his backpack, and he never came back. I think I saw him a few years later and he thought I was the one that told on him. I tried denying it but didn't want to risk getting into an argument. If you're wondering how it worked, I think he had some knife and a styrofoam slip that he taped on his arm. I think it either would somehow slip out into his palm when activated, or he'd manually push it out. He wanted to make it more intricate, but he got caught before he could. Story 8. He just kept his pants. There was nothing wrong with him. He just kept doing it. Same place, same time, every day. Right after recess when we lined up to go inside, he just let loose. The fattest and wettest fart slash shit you'd ever heard. And it would echo through the silent hallway for literally everyone in the grade to hear. At first, we thought it was just embarrassing for him. But by the time week two came around, we were all convinced he was doing it intentionally. I have no explanation because he was kicked out after like three months of consistently doing it. I nearly forgot. He would announce to everyone that he himself by saying, and I quote, whoops, I myself. Story 9. Him and his cousin beat up the deputy principal and tried to kill him with a spade. At school. No charges ended up being laid. Later went on to kill a tourist during the 2000 New Year's and dump his body in the harbor. Edit. Brothers, not cousins. Memory is a little hazy after 23 years. I personally didn't know them, but knew enough to stay the f away from them. They were known for being trouble kids. Our art teacher stopped the attack. He's a hero in my opinion. Well done, sleuths, for finding the articles. Story 10. He started a fire in some backpacks. This was in elementary school, like 91, 92-ish. And we were in, like, second grade. After that, no one was allowed to go into the hall unattended. Backpacks were in a weird corridor in the hallway outside the pod of classrooms. Another one was the only male cheerleader beat someone to a pulp for making fun of him for being a cheerleader. The fight was huge, interrupted all the classes, and hundreds of students watched this cheerleader in uniform just pummel this other guy. They ended up outside the school in the middle of the streets. Several teachers had to step in and stop the fight. I believe the cheerleader would have killed the kid if someone didn't intervene. Story 11. This is one of my favorite stories. Setting. High school in a rural area many years ago. We were seniors. I'm in welding class one day, and I overheard a couple kids talking at one of the welding stations. Booths with concrete on three sides, open top, and a curtain behind you. I hear them talking about welding an object to the metal welding table. Of course, I'm curious, so I peek around the corner and see they are both looking at a spray bottle of pressurized Axe body spray. I immediately realize this will go poorly, being a pressurized and flammable substance. So I put in and say that's a bad idea. Both these idiots cut me off and tell me to F off. I played football against them and their rival high school, and we never got along super well. So I said, whatever, F you guys too, and walked across the room where I can see the teacher and their booth, and made myself look busy while watching these clowns. Sure enough, I didn't think they'd actually do it. I see the curtain shut, spark, spark, and boom. Flame shot out the top about 10 feet, and this idiot came bursting out of the booth like a character in a cartoon. Hair back up and slinked soot all over his face and a big look of shock on his face. Teacher was red-faced and yelled at this moron for a solid five minutes and stormed out with both of these guys. Last I heard, they were expelled from that school. I will never forget that smell. Axe and burnt hair. Story 12. The guy was intelligent and was overall a nice kid and a good student when I first met him. He got in with the popular crowd who were a bunch of degenerate d***s. Watched him slowly fall down that slope from junior high school to high school, where he would just smoke weed all day and skip class. 
experimenting with harder drugs. He ended up body slamming a kid he was bullying, and the kid snapped his arm in half. Pretty bad compound fracture. Got expelled for that. My mother is a nurse and looked after him a few times. He was in and out of the hospital for drug addiction and alcohol abuse. Not sure if he turned his life around or if he's dead, but I'm hoping he cleaned up his act and has found his peace. Story 13. Baited a very mentally unwell homeless man into the school for the giggles. Man had a knife, and after being refused fries from the school cafeteria, threw a tantrum on the tables. Nobody was hurt, but the kid was expelled for threatening future safety. The school made him take it down, and this was in 2012, but there used to be a video on YouTube of the incident. Story 14. Here's one. A girl got drunk at a house party. Some guy ejaculated on her hair and took photos of it, as well as a few photos of her naked and unconscious. The girl's boyfriend went John Wick on the guy when he emailed the photos. He was sent away for beating the shit out of this SAer who wasn't even given detention. And the girl's photos got sent around for years, and people called her a shit. terrible school. It was a big school, so if you think that's in your school, there's a chance it was. The guy knocked out most of the teeth of that bloke, and there was a long debate about whether it was justified. I reckon it was. This was in Australia, and I have no idea how any of the involved are now. I could ask, but don't want to. They were a couple of years above me. Story 15. For making a fake bomb and slipping it into another kid's backpack. Honestly, looking back on it, it's kind of impressive. Because the little box thing had a flashing red light. Kid was in the fourth grade at the time, and the bomb squad came to dismantle it. A few years later, a legit bomb was found near the school he was moved to. Pretty sure he's in jail now. Story 16. In middle school, this girl did nothing but start fights. The last I saw her, she was being taken, alone, on a full-sized school bus to who knows where. As the bus drove off, she squeezed herself halfway out a window, screaming at everyone that she'd beat our asses. Another kid in high school got expelled after bringing brass knuckles to attack some other kid. When confronted by the school officer, he tried to act like the brass knuckles were a decoration for his lanyard. Story 17. This wasn't the official reason, but this kid's dad was piping down the principal's wife. So the faculty basically hazed this kid into getting expelled. They would make jokes about his clothes, hygiene, and home life, which didn't make sense because this kid's family had a lot of money bags. He was a clean kid. The teachers bullying him finally made him crack. And in the middle of a big altercation with the principal in class, the kid yelled, I'm glad my daddy's f***ing your wife. I'm just pissed he didn't give me a pass at her. The whole class lost it, and the principal cried. Story 18. I went to a really small rural school. 300 students from K through 12 small. I started there in second grade, and we were always a tight-knit class. We had some kids come and go over the years, but the majority of the people I graduated with were also second grade classmates. In junior high, we had a kid come in. We'll call him Danny. He was a total asshole, and he basically fractured our class from one cohesive group into cliques. He and a couple of otherwise good kids basically became the school bullies. It was bad enough that we had so many substitute teachers quit after having our class. Somehow, they were always just careful enough to not cross a line to get into too much trouble. Our senior year, my class planned to take a weekend trip to a semi-local amusement park as our senior sneak trip. During the senior year, Danny and his posse were worse than ever, to the point that many of us were not going to go on the senior trip. Despite working our butts off doing car washes and other fundraisers from junior high on in order to fund the trip, a few weeks before the trip, Danny and one of the others from his clique did something and got expelled. I don't know the full details, but it had something to do with physical violence against our school counselor. It was an overnight change in the dynamics of our class. It was like the cliques disappeared. Even the other Danny followers that were left changed their attitudes and were nice to everyone again. We all went on the trip and had a great time. Graduation came and went. We had a PTA-sponsored overnight graduation party. Then after that was over, we all went and had a party at a nearby lake. I don't know what it was with Danny, 
but it was like an old cartoon where he was the bad guy that put a town under a spell. And once the superhero kicked his ass, the whole town went back to normal. I wouldn't have believed something like that was possible had I not seen it myself. I don't know what happened to him. Despite the things he did to me and my friends, both directly and indirectly, I wish him well. I hope that was a wake-up call and he turned his life around and made something of it. I think it's more likely he ended up in prison though, but I have no idea. Story 19. Elementary School. Dude was suspended for a good month and came into the class with the vice principal as she carried a few sheets with her. I could only imagine separate work. When they came in, the vice principal asked if he was ready to join us again. He responded by whacking the papers out of her hands and onto the floor, running down the hall. Never saw him again. Middle school. Dude was just a little obnoxious throughout the year, but nothing major from what I saw. Then one day, out of the blue, the whole school was required to change their password, as the guy got a hold of a teacher's password and logged into a computer as them to change his grades. High school. No expulsions, but some of the that went down with some folks should have led them to be expelled. Story 20. He got an important science exam that him and his class were given a whole month to complete. When he gave the exam sheets to the teacher, they were all blank, and the only writing on it was, F*** science. The teacher said they were going to have to suspend him. He tried to start a fist fight with the teacher. He was expelled as soon as possible. Only two people in my class saw him after he got expelled, and they both said he looked miserable. Story 21. Came on here to see if anyone mentioned what my friends and I did. Nope. Here goes. They took the french fries away from our school cafeteria, so we began loading empty milk cartons full of food and dropping them down stairwells on teachers. The cartons had notes attached, saying the attacks would continue until the fries came back. We were very sneaky and didn't get caught for six months. Unfortunately, we were dumb kids who were really into the game Red Faction. Our school colors were red and white, so we took to calling ourselves the White Faction. It wasn't until after we were caught that we considered that some people might think we were racist. I'm lucky we all only got a month suspension and ISS for another month. I have a PhD and a law degree now. Story 22. He was a junior or senior in high school who got sent to choices, which is basically in-school suspension. He didn't like the school choices officer because he got sent there a lot. So one day, he decided to light the officer's personal truck on fire in the school parking lot, and it kind of exploded. Yeah. He was expelled and sent to jail. He became a meme that spread through the school like wildfire. A pic of his face with the caption, Don't like your teacher? Just blow their truck up. And shit like that. People in the school got in trouble when the faculty would figure out who was sending the memes. This was back in like 2016. Story 23. A kid in my class got into an argument with a girl at lunch. They were about 11 and the girl started smacking him. He lost his temper, then did a quick flurry of punches and a kick. The girl left crying. The next day at school, out in our local streets, all the kids were having lunch and saw an older kid walking past me towards the kid who hit the girl. Turns out it was her older brother from the high school up the road who came for some payback. The older kid got the younger one into a headlock and started punching him. The younger kid struggles but manages to get out of the headlock and run into a local store. The kid hid in there for a while before I think his parents picked him up. Next thing we knew, rumor had already spread that the older kid got expelled from his high school. Story 24. So this was in 5th grade. This kid was bad. Like, he was involved with This is pure speculation, but I remember he used to bring small bags with It could have just been oregano, I don't know. Cussed out teachers. Like, not mumbling under his breath. Full-on verbal fights with the teachers. Never did his work. His parents couldn't even control him. The event that did it was him fighting with one of the male teachers after sending him out of the class for talking to one of the students. He refused to leave, and when the teacher tried to call security, the kid started punching him. Like, not soft hitting like what some kids would do if they threw tantrums, but full-blown punches. This kid wasn't very big for a fifth grader, but he could pack a punch. The teacher wasn't very built either. 
He was maybe 5'10ish with a slim build, and this is just to my best memory. Anyway, it took like three staff and a security guard to pry this kid off the teacher, and by then, all of the kids, including myself, packed into the corner. The kid got expelled, and the teacher quit, I believe. I'm not really sure. We didn't see him for a good two months. Mid-school year. I heard from gossip among the teachers. A bad kid broke his ribs or something like that. He came back to finish the semester and after that, quit. Though I was already heading to 6th grade, so I'm not sure. My sister, a year younger than me, said she never saw that guy again.